Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how you can use Carbon to copy your Azure VMs back down to your on-premise Hyper-V environment. Now this is useful if you need to copy your workloads from Azure back to your on-premise environment. Or you've been replicating your on-prem VMs to Azure, had a hardware failure, failed over to Azure, and now you need to copy them back. So let me just launch the application and we can get started. Okay, so when you first launch the application, it will check how long it's been since it ran a last scan. So I ran it a few hours ago, so I don't need to run it again. But just be aware that if you say no, any new resources you've deployed since the last scan will not appear. Okay. All right, so this is the, the main homepage. To begin, all you need to do is click on the Select Virtual Machines icon, and you'll see a list of all the VMs in your environment that you have access to. Now, this is only our lab environment, so we only have three, four, five machines. And you can see the, the name of the VM, its status, the size, uh, so the amount of CPUs, memory or RAM, uh, the IP address, the VNet it's on, uh, the OS it's running, the resource group it's within, uh, the subscription it's attached to, the location, and how many disks are attached to that VM. So as you can see, test VM 03 has six disks associated. Uh, test VM 04 has no data disks, only the OS. So let's pick um, a tricky one. Let's let's do uh, test VM 03, which has six disks, and let's do dev DC, which has one disk. And you can see it doesn't matter whether they're in the same subscription or different subscriptions, VNets, uh, resource groups. It doesn't matter. Okay, so once you've selected the VMs you want to uh, copy, just click Next. Okay, so you'll see a screen here depending on whether or not the VM is running under managed disks. So one or more of these servers uh, are using managed disks. So what that means is uh, you need to copy the VHDs into a standard storage account before you can actually migrate them down. So I'm just going to say OK so we can proceed. Uh, I already have a few standard storage accounts. If you don't have any, you'll need to deploy at least one. Uh, I'm just going to choose uh, this one here. It doesn't really matter because at the end of it, uh, once the migration finishes, those blobs are deleted from the storage account. So proceed. And what it's going to do now is read those VMs and um, I guess enumerate all those disks that are associated with each of those VMs. So this can take a few minutes. Um, so I'm just going to pause the video while it completes that process. Okay, so that process finished. It didn't actually take very long, um, under, under two minutes. So in this screen, you can see uh, the two VMs that we're looking to copy down to our on-premise environment. And these are my two Hyper-V hosts uh, that are running on-premise. Uh, so what you'll need to do is specify which host you want each VM to end up on. So I'm just going to click on, uh, let's say, Hyper-V01. And I'm just going to put it straight into that path. Uh, actually, I'm going to just put them both on the same, same host, same detail. So you, you can actually just click the field down if you have multiple VMs and you just want them all with the same details. So I'm going to click uh, this option here to send me an email when the process completes and I'll be alerted when, the, when it's all done. Okay, so I'm going to hit uh, start migration and you'll just get a, a warning or a, a message appear just letting you know some information about the actual migration or the copy process. Um, so the, as it converts disks from managed to standard, a lot of the times the process remains at zero um, and then it ends up jumping from zero to 100, uh, especially if you're copying across regions. So just be aware of that. Uh, aborting the migration once the process starts, you can do it, but it might leave you with some orphan files and VMs that you'll have to clean up manually. Uh, at the end of it, you'll need to associate uh, a network adapter with each of the VMs just to get it attached to the network. 
Uh, additionally, during the copy process, a lock is placed on those disks of those VMs, so that means you won't be able to power them on until the copy process is finished and that lock is automatically removed. And of course, depending on the number of VMs you select, the amount of storage and your internet speed determines how long the actual process will take. Okay, so I, I understand and accept, and let's begin. So now it's going to go off and review all those disks, all those VMs, find out which process has to happen first. Uh, so we can see here these first two VM, dev DC, is not using managed disks. So that's going to move along quicker. Uh, test VM 3 is definitely using managed disks. So because there are six, we're going to have to wait for all those disks to finish translating into a storage, standard storage account before it can actually start pulling that data down. So I'm going to pause the video here and come back as the uh, progress moves along so we can see what's happening. Okay, so as we can see, the managed disk conversion process has moved along. Uh, some of it has already completed. You can see 100% here and here. These one, two, three, four disks, four data disks are still converting. So I'll just go back on pause again and let that process finish. Okay, so the conversion has completed all 100%, and now the disk is downloading locally. Uh, one has already completed, one is pending to initiate, and you can see some of them have already started as well. So again, I'll go on pause until that process finishes. back in and we can see that all the data disks have completed downloading and it's just the OS disks that remain for each of the VMs. So again I'll pause the video and I'll come back at uh, the completion. Okay and we're back and you can see that the process has completed. See that the VMs have been deployed, DevDC and TestVM03. All the disks have been completed and attached. So let's just have a quick look in the Hyper-V Manager. Make a quick connection. There's TestVM03 and there's DevDC. So let's just have a quick look at the settings of these servers. Here's the uh, boot disk and all the associated drives that come along with that VM. Uh, check this one. Uh, yep, boot disk and associated data disk. So as you can see, pretty easy guys. Uh, not a lot to it, um, quite a simple process to copy your VMs from Azure down to your on-premise Hyper-V environment. And one of the beauties of Carbon is that you don't necessarily need um, VMM to make this work. So you can use VMM if you have it, but if you don't, you can just punch in all your Hyper-V servers one by one up to a maximum of 10 and uh, deploy workloads directly to those hosts. Or of course, if you do have VMM, just load up all your details and it works the same way. So that's it. Um, if you would like to try the software, uh, go to our website, www.smicker.com and uh, download and try it for free.